Hello! Today I'm gonna try to do a different tutorial that's not just Houdini. Um, I do I use a lot of software and I'm not great at a lot of it, but some of it I'm pretty used to by now. And I wanted to do a little introduction um, to a different type of software. This one's called Spine. And Spine is... Oops. Yeah. Spine is a 2D... There you go, 2D animation for games. So Spine is an animation software which primarily is used to make game assets. The benefit of using it is a file size because it makes you a single file, which is the sprite sheet, and a skeleton file, and all the animation is contained within the animation data, which is basically a text file. So when you use it for games, it's very optimized. There's no bloat. There's just a basic shader that animates everything. And in short, it's a really good minimal way to do character rigs. Unity has its own character rig options, but they're a little bit limited. And also you need to be using the newest Unity and you can't always do that. Um, and Spine lets you do a lot more with very clean, easy interface. And yeah, it's a great little software. Now, when you open up Spine, you'll get a bunch of help guides and projects and a lot of things to press. But when you hit new project, you'll see it's pretty minimal. It's basically, and I've been expanding and closing these windows, but let me just, uh, you don't really need this right now. Uh, it basically looks like this. It's just a blank window with your game assets that you're going to be putting in. And on the bottom, you've got the controllers. So moving, rotating, translating, um, and other things I'll explain. But basically just, you know, how where am I going to place this? What bone am I going to do with, uh, what bone am I going to use for what assets? Everything just kind of stays here. And on the right side, you've got your hierarchy, which you can think of this like Toon Boom or Maya or most animation software. It's just like a top-down hierarchy where the root bone is at the top. Well, the skeleton here is at the top. And then you got a root bone and then you, everything, we just kind of keep going downwards. Um, so yeah, it's very like clean and easy to navigate. Uh, which is why it's quite animation friendly without need to code anything. And yet it's very good to use with Unity because in Unity you can basically continue on from here and really fine tune everything and access everything in real time. So anyway, um, I'm going to just quickly run over the software and there's a lot to go through, but I'm just going to try to show the basics, which is adding an asset and maybe doing a rig or two, or like at least an IK. Uh, so when you have spine open, if the first thing I do normally is I save the project test. And once the project is saved, you've got access to all the subfolders of that folder. So in this case, uh, and in here I've got images and I got these images. Now I chose these sample images because Felix the Cat is is copyright free because it's I think it's about 90 years old at this point. Uh, so I wanted to try that. I basically found an asset here and then I clear cut the body out of this. So the body itself is I just, I just open up Photoshop and I fill the gaps and then I get the tail that I just basically fill the gaps from there. Same with the head, but it's just a clear cut of this. Uh, yeah, just as a sample. So if you go into your project, if you click on the triangle and under images and then images again, because that's not the folder name, um, you'll see everything is in here. So that's pretty straightforward. Now, if you want to add assets, you can click and you can drag on the stage and this will create an images um, slot and an image inside of the slot. Uh, now, a slot is basically just a container. It's just a blank container that contains your assets. Uh, it's, if you want to think about like, like Flash, it's like a movie clip. If you think about like After Effects, it's like, I guess, just a layer 
like a pre-comp. Um, and yeah, I can just keep adding images. I don't, I, I don't need this one. If I can add the head, I can add the tail and the images are there. Now, I, if instead of just clicking the triangle, you can right click, which is quite useful. So if you right click on any folder, you can just close and open everything up. So that's pretty handy. I'll be using right click instead of clicking on stuff. And now I've got an asset with some images. They're not rigs. They're just images placed inside of a rig. So if I click on the root, you can see a little, I get a little hand, handlebar, um, a little up and right um, selection, which if you click and drag anywhere in the scene, when you have these selected, you can basically move whatever selected. You can see the tr translates highlighted. Like, for example, if it wasn't, you'd be getting something different. Um, but if you got that selected, then you can move it around. Uh, so yeah, you can move, you can rotate, uh, you can scale, you can shear. Uh, there's shortcuts for these. Um, I believe it is, yeah, there we go. C, V, X, Z. Now it seems weird because they're random number, uh, random keys. Uh, but if you look at your keyboard, the last four digits on the, on the lower part of your keyboard on the left side are basically those. So that makes it quite easy because you can cycle between them. Um, they're right next to each other in the keyboard. Um, yeah. So before I start messing with this asset, so I'm just going to quickly show you how to make an actual bone. So if you click on create over here at the bottom, you can create a bone. So if you click, you've made a bone and it's, it's got an ID and everything. If you click and drag, you can make a like an actual like bone with a length as opposed to just like a tiny little pin. So if you click and drag and you click and drag, click and drag, you can just keep making bones. Now, if you notice on the uh, tree view, you've actually got the hierarchy happening. So as you as I've been clicking, the software assumes I'm making a skeleton. So it already parents everything together. So for example, if I was making a body, I could go back to my root. And if I, let's make the lower spine then the upper spine and then maybe the head, you can see it's already it's already laying it out the way you would normally lay it out. Like, like if I call this like lower spine, oops, uh, to, to name something, you just double click upper spine and then head. Then you've got a little hierarchy happening. So the thing with the hierarchy is this is useful for, I mean, rigging, but also if you do IK, if you do uh, constraints, your hierarchy really matters. So you should always like watch where something is on the timeline, uh, the, on the, sorry, on the, on the hierarchy um, window, because sometimes you can't, you know, rig something properly and it's because it's somewhere where it shouldn't be, uh, the bone that is. So yeah, so you've got lower spine, upper spine, head, um, you can just, you can just keep going. So if you get the upper spine, you can make like a left arm, uh, and I'll show you a trick. So as you're doing this, you can, you can go, um, uh, arm left, let's say one, even though it would be normally called one, but if you click on, if you call it one, and if you click again and click again, you'll notice it actually increments. Now, this is useful for, for example, if you got like a, like an octopus or something with a lot of limbs, the, the naming something with a number at the end is very useful because you can uh, automatically just keep clicking and it's going to name stuff for you. Uh, probably this would be called upper left, uh, arm left upper, or maybe, no, 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 upper left. Bad, and then... Uh, and then the second one, and then the third one, oh, whoops. Third one. and I can just put this in here. I'll call this lower left, and then arm hand left. Uh, yeah, so now you've got an arm. You can duplicate this whole selection, make another arm. Uh, and yeah, so this is a very straightforward way of just rigging, uh, minimal bones, etc. Um, and when you rotate the, 
top level, it moves the whole thing. You can select this one, it moves the whole thing. Or like these two levels. And then this level. Now that's great. Um, but this is not IK. This is just a basic mo movement. Uh, I'm maybe jumping ahead, but if but at this point you can basically make an IK from this. It's quite straightforward. I'm gonna use the upper. The, I'm gonna delete this actually and use the left arm because it's already been named properly. Um, so the way to make an IK is you need two bones and then a target. Uh, in this case, I can have the upper left and then the lower left and the hand left. Now, because it's an IK, I'm actually going to move the hands up to the upper spine. So it's no longer attached to the to these two bones, which you'll be thinking like, oh, this, this is going to break the chain, which it is. Uh, but what you will do is you select the first part of the chain, the second part of the chain, upper, lower, and then you go new IK constraint. And then you select the hands. And this is important because it should not be in the hierarchy. You can't select it if it's in the hierarchy. Select the hierarchy, select the hands, and then you go OK. And now, when you move the hands, you have an IK. Now, if this hand was inside of here, then it's going to really mess up the whole flow so they don't let you stick a hierarchy target within the hierarchy. Uh, it needs to be outside of the, uh, the root. And that's fine. So now you got a little arm. Uh, and you might go, okay, but this doesn't, I can only move, rotate this one way. Well, you can actually click on the constraint, which is what we've made, and you can click on the positive, and now you got a flipped hand. So I can go either way. And if you select stretch, now you've got a stretchy arm. So if you want to do bending and like squash and stretch animation, that's low stretch. So you can do that. Uh, so yeah, basic IK. And that, that's how you do it. Now, let's see when I animate this, right? It's like, let's see, you got the sorry key. I'm, I'm going to delete all this, these other bones because you don't actually need any of these. Uh, going to delete this, going to delete that. Oops, that's the that's the root. Okay. All right, all right I'll leave this then. Uh, but I will be moving these two somewhere over here. Uh, let's see when I animate this. So, like, it goes from here down to here and then up to here. That's great. Um, to do that, there's no animation thing anywhere here. But if you click on the bottom of the top left, you see setup. You click this once, in, now you're in animation mode. And if you click back and forth, you can toggle between. Uh, when you do, when you're in setup mode, you're setting up the, the, the whole rig. Like everything that you need to do for the roots of the rig is here. And in animation mode, you can start creating timelines and animate stuff. And if you make modifications in the setup, then in the animation mode, it's going to reflect it. So for example, if I change the length of one of these bones in animation mode, it's already going to have this exact same animation, but with a different length of the bone, which is actually really useful. So once you're done with the setup, and if you want to move this around, you can click on animation mode. You're already in, an an in a timeline. It's called animation. I can click on the key for transform these match the these match the colors and the shortcuts for setup mode and i can move the key the um the uh playhead to the, let's say 25. Can move this down here and now uh, it's moving and i can move this so you don't actually need to even select the key you can just pick a random spot let's say here and i'll move it here and already made my key for me. I'm gonna delete the middle key. Actually, no, I'll leave it because I want I want an actual arc. So it goes here and then down and then up. Uh, and if you press D on the keyboard, you can actually preview it. Uh, yeah, so if I go here and then down and then up, it moves the animation. Now, I'm gonna also do a little ease and to do an ease i select the first key i can click on the easing button and i can make an ease in and i can select the ease button the second key for and go ease out and then it makes a little ease in and out uh yeah so that's that's like the most basic animation you got like a little movement happening and yeah you've 
you know, very quickly you've got a little IK rigs happening. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 like the animation side of it. So you say easy to root, uh, set up a rig, very clean layout, etc. Uh, but yeah, now how do you apply this to a character? Well, with a character, there's a couple ways to apply it. Uh, you can directly, like let's say you have the tail, right? So with the tail, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna delete all this stuff. I'm gonna delete the spell. So with the tail, you have a curved surface. So I'm gonna first make a new bone on the bottom right side, which will make a bone based on the tail. I'm gonna double click and not call it images dash tail. And I'm not gonna rename the, the image. Um, yeah, so I've got, got the tail as a bone. I'm gonna hit create because I don't want the root bone to be like, um, just like a pointer. I'm gonna create a bone here, a bone here, a bone here, a bone here. So now you've got like a little tailbone. Uh, I'm gonna move the tail bones up into the root level. So they're not connected to the image. I'll show you why in a second. Uh, so now I've got these four. Uh, this is too many for an IK. You, you need maximum of three. But what we can do instead with the tail is we can use a path constraint. So you've got the tails, the tail sections. I'm going to go back to the root. I'm going to click on here on the new and I'm going to make a path. I'm going to call it tail underscore path. And I'm going to click here at the beginning, click here at the end, and start dragging and messing with this path. Okay. So now I'm going to right click, which will close the path off. Press escape. I got a little path. Now, you can connect these things together. So if I select these bones here, I select all of them, and I click on path constraint, and I click on the path, and I go OK. Now the bones are actually rigged up to the path. Uh, and you see they actually are not facing the path, which you can fix by at the bottom of the path of constraint, which is here. You select the tangent and you select chain scale. And now they're actually following the path. So now when I move this path around, the bones are following it. All right, so Maybe I should have started with the tail because it's not just a basic rig because it's a like it's a path rig. But hey, now you know how to use a path. So how do I apply this to the, to the uh, tail of the character? Well, you can set the tail on a basic level at least. You can get the tail itself and you can move it to the side of one of these bones. And now the tail moves when you move the skeleton which is fine, it's a basic, I mean, this is overkill for what this is, you can just get away with one bone. Um, but, you know, it like, you can actually move the tail this way, so that's fine. But what I'm gonna do instead, is I'm gonna use the software the way it's like, I guess like it's, the, the, the prime use of the software is with using the assets as meshes, and I'm gonna use that for the tail. So right now the tail is just a JPEG or a PNG. It's the rectangle, you can see the border over here. But if I select mesh while well, selecting the image asset of the tail and I hit edit mesh and I go, I can make a new uh, mesh. So if I hit new, this is now in a window where it's going to let me make a mesh out of this tail. Uh, and I can, if, if you look at here you have some options. For example, dim will dim the assets so you can better preview the uh, mesh, uh, which it's already black, so I don't need it. Uh, deformed is if you're animating and deforming it and you're uh, wanting to preview it as you're deforming it, you can click deformed. But yeah, um, so back to what we're doing. We're hitting edit mesh, then we go new. And then I start clicking around. Like, give it enough points so that there's something for the skeleton to work with. Maybe not too many in the beginning, just enough. 
just enough to encompass this tail. And I just keep adding and adding and adding. Okay. And now I've made a basic little rig. Now it's going to be a little bit low poly and that's fine because this is a game asset. So we can make this like really high quality and like extremely um, smooth, but then in the game engine, it's going to lags because like, one well, probably not because it's just a tail, but like it, ideally you should have a lower poly mesh. Um, and so now you've got this tail as a mesh, which is great. And I had escaped to get out of this mode and then I can, Give, give this some weights. So if I click on the three dots in the window, you can minimize or you can dock. Oops, you can minimize or you can dock, which I made a mistake, but let's look, let's fix it. So if I go into views, I can go back and see which one was it? It was, how do I bring this back? Uh, let's go, well, let's go. Let's just, let's just add all of them and see what happens. I think it's three. Yeah, that's three. Okay. Uh, what I was trying to do was actually not here. It was actually in the views. My bad. It was in mesh tools. In mesh tools, you have selection sizes, but I also need the weights, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna drag this down here, and I'm gonna lay this out like this. Okay, so the weights menu is how you add bones to the object. So if you hit bind and you select all four tail bones and you right click, it's gonna automatically start adding weights. So you don't even need to do it yourself. You can just do that. It's gonna give the weights. If I go back to the path and to like the path of the object and I start moving it around, the tail is gonna move. Now it's a little bit low poly because there's not many we haven't given it this this many triangles, so it's if you start really messing with it, eventually it's going to break, which it can be it can be fixed by adding even more uh, polys. So if I hit Edit Mesh and uh, click on Modify, oh sorry, uh, Create, it's going to create even more points and I can right click a couple of times or cycle or just hit modify and you can start moving these around. Um, and yeah, you can start fiddling with this and messing with the, how many points it's got, how detailed it is, which this could take a lot, a lot of time or a little bit of time depending, but I just want to give you like this primer, just so you know that you typically start with a low amount of points and then you add more points as you know which weights are going where and this is kind of where the, the way you're going to be controlling the character and as you kind of realize the just the overall mechanics of the control then you can start fine-tuning the stuff so if i head on weights here on the bottom you can see the weights that these bones have so you got blue pink purple and orange is the colors that this has been assigned. So you can see the weights of these bones along the model. For a better selection, you can hit overlay here in the weights mode and you can really see the uh, how much weight everything has. So I can, I can click on tail four here and select the mode to be add. And I got this big Photoshop looking brush and you can change, adjust the settings. So if I change the size, I can start manually painting. So you can, you can do manual painting. Uh, typically manual painting, you don't really need to do a lot unless, uh, the mesh is not perfectly set up in the first place. But if you've got an, a complex thing, like a head, like a head or eyes, then yeah, you will be doing a lot, but typically the automatic one is good enough. Um, but yeah, you, this typically, is a little fine-tuned mode so you can adjust the weights yourself if it feels like a little bit sharp in the edges or you, if you want some help you can click on smooth here which will automatically smooth your weights uh this can backfire but do as you're working on it go back and test it yeah okay good enough so now you got so now the tail has little weights uh now there's other ways to 
that are even easier to set up the mesh. So I did, I did this manually, but if I go in the body and I click mesh and then go edit mesh, I can hit trace instead of new. And if you go trace, the software itself is going to try to find the outline of the mesh, which is great. It doesn't really sound perfect. It typically requires fiddling, adjustments, uh, refinement. Like I know there's like a concave sections over here. So I put the, co the concavity quite high. I can put the detail to be low to make a game ready. But then as you can see, it's not really, you know, perfect. Uh, but yeah, you keep adjusting it and changing stuff and you can go, okay. And now since you've already got like an idea of what this is, uh, you can go ahead and start fine tuning it even more. So for example, I want some knees to exist here and maybe, and maybe this is not just one joint, right? This is like two separate joints. So if you, uh, if you click plus here and or basically these three buttons, you can now make sure that there is an actual left foot and the right foot. By the way, right click is like the magic solution in the software. So you can click on modify create delete over and over so I can, you know, create and then I can hit delete if I don't want to point or modify. But if I just keep right clicking, it's going to cycle through all these. So you never really need to even touch this. So you can just uh, go, okay, now I'm moving and now I'm adding. And uh, and there's, there's too many, now I'm removing. Yeah, you can basically do the whole thing without even touching UI, just by uh, right-clicking. Yeah, anyway, so you got a knee, right? So you got one on the left and one on the right. Uh, and you got one here. Now, just as a test, because this is quite low poly still, but again, work from low poly to high poly. Let's say I want to just give it a, this, this foot an actual IK, like a little basic IK. Uh, I'm just going to do that now. So I've got the body. I'm going to give make this into a bone. I'm going to call it a body. And I'm going to make a new bone, and I'm going to put it here. I'm going to call it upper leg left lower and one here okay that's good enough i'm gonna lower leg left and then uh lower and up. i'm just gonna call it foot left and i'll put this one up here into this level and i'm gonna select the leopard in the lower new ik S select the root the, the foot as a target, and now I got a little IK, which is cool. And I'm going to first select this, the body, and I'm going to bind the, the, the root body bone here, and then I'm going to right click here. And then if I hit wait, you'll see, you know, this is just, uh, this whole thing is just one color, because uh, there's only one to bind but if i hit bind again and then i go left lower and then foot then right click again you know i've added these three to the hierarchy of the uh weights so if i go into i'm gonna select only the left foot to start adding weights uh, so that i don't accidentally make any mistakes and get the right foot or the chest i can control click or command click on mac and select multiple bones, multiple, sorry, multiple points. Uh, let's put one here. I think, yeah, one here. Select this, this, this. Okay. I think this one too. Well, let's test, let's test. So, yeah, okay. Cool. So, I'm going to add some weights to the upper leg here. Oops, oh, I deselected it by accident, so I'm going to select it again. Okay, upper leg, lower leg, foot. I'm going to make the strength 100, just so I don't accidentally leave something here. Lower leg, um, upper leg here. 
and I'm gonna, so you got had direct remove replace. So I'm gonna directly select individual points. I'm gonna make sure the body's got full control here. Maybe the body's got like, yeah, let's, let's give the body full control there. And then maybe like half control here. This is not, this is going to experimentation level. So I'm gonna select escape. Cause I think I realized that this should have a little bit more points. So maybe have a point here. Oops, no, I should know, a point here. And then, yeah, maybe a point there and then a point here. I don't need it here. So what I'm doing is I can see the bone, like the lower, the lower joint here starts about there. So I'm gonna make sure that the points are near it so that when it bends, it it's closer to where the mesh is. So I'm gonna select escape and I'm gonna go wait. And I'm gonna select these two and I'm gonna give the upper leg more control. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna need to be to deform it a couple of times before I can actually figure out what's happening. Let's give this. A little bit more weight. Uh, well, let's try it. It might not be good, but let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna select the foot. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I'm just gonna once you're once you're like fiddling with it. Now I can go into weights again, and directly adjust things, so I can really fine tune it. Yeah. Now. This is very low, which is great because now you can go back and add more and more points. But there's a low point character. Now you've got a very clean and basic rig. Or not now that this leg moves. Now, if you want to try this, I'm going to put in the description, I'm going to put the entire asset folder as, as well as my finished rig which does all this stuff, but I've really gone in and had a lot more um, IK stuff to it. I can show you what that looks like, but yeah, it's basically what I'm doing here, but with a lot more points um, and a lot more IK setups. So if I go, oh, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna quickly, I think it's, yeah, it's called rig. Yeah, so just like I had before, I had these two. And same here, there, there's one for the arm. This thumb is a little bit not great, but maybe you can fix it. That'd be great if you can fix it. Um, yeah, and it does the same thing. You can move this around. And you've noticed I've, I've also added like a secondary thing. So say so if I wanted to, for example, only move the toe, you can do that. So you can make like a little marionette looking thing. And I can click on this bone in the middle, which is a leg con con container and like move this whole thing around. Yeah, and uh, it's that's that's the basics of the software. You can do a lot with this. Um, now, the main thing is it's you should be aiming if you're using the software to work in games. So the character should be like this big. So in terms of like maximum poly count you should not be aiming for anything super high it should be enough so you can quickly animate and do a lot of uh, skinning or customization with it and not so much make it look perfect uh, although it should you should try to make the, the rig as smooth as possible uh, you'll notice with the mouth and on, on the face i've done the exact same thing except i made like a horizontal bone uh, and i can click if i click on the face uh, which is here and if I click edit, I uh, no, sorry, not if I if I click weights, you'll see I've the mouth actually has this like weight container. Um, so when I move the mouth, it moves this. But if I scale it, now I can have some basic scaling, and we gotta fix this at some point. But oops, but yeah, so this is a little just a little basic primer for the software. So again, the main thing you need to worry about is the IK and setting up your bones 
keeping it low poly and then making a making a basic mesh that is low poly and then once you're happy with the basics you can right start adding in more detail um yeah i hope that's useful this is not a houdini tutorial this is a completely different two-dimensional tutorial that someone might be finding of use i'm not sure but i wanted to quickly just share a little bit of what i what i've done for other stuff so that i can hopefully help other people using spine yeah uh thank you for your time